Walker, you are looking live inside a Quincy courtroom in Massachusetts. This is where Brian Walsh, charged with a murder now of his wife, Anna, is facing charges. Let's listen in. They're also charged with return of a body, did without lawful authority, did willfully dig up or remove human remains. Not guilty, please, the end. Do you understand those charges, Mr. Walsh? I do. From yes, thank you, Your Honor. Um, we're not contesting bail or probable cause, so we would ask that he be released. Thank you, Ms. Steiner, but I have to satisfy myself with probable cause. Thank you. Thank you, Your Honor. Lynn Beeland for the Commonwealth. The defendant is now before the court charged with murder of his wife, Anna Walsh, as well as disinterring of a body. Anna was 39 years old and the mother of three children, two, four, and six. Anna worked in Washington, D.C., splitting her time weekdays between D.C. during the week and uh, staying in her house in Cohasset, where she lived with the defendant and their three kids. On January 4th of 2023, Cohasset police received um, a call from her Washington, D.C. employee indicating that she was missing. Um, she was due to report uh, to work on January 4th, but did not appear. She had a flight on January 3rd from Logan to D.C., which she did not board. Cohasset police went to their house at Chief Justice Cushing Highway for a well-being check. It was only at this time well, when they met with the defendant that he first reported his wife missing. Defendant stated his wife left the house at approximately 6 a.m. on January 1st, New Year's Day. He stated she took an Uber or a Lyft uh, to go to the airport, that she was turning to D.C. for work. Records were checked and there were no Uber or Lyfts to that house on January 1st. Defendant said he had not spoken uh, to his wife since the early morning hours on New Year's Day. Cahasset police were granted permission to Bing um, on his phone to locate her or her phone. And his phone indicated that it was stationary in the area of the Cahasset house on New Year's Eve until 3.14 a.m. on January 2nd. There were no outgoing calls made at that time. And at 3.14 a.m. on the 2nd, it was turned off. Defendant stated Anna should have been wearing a dress, a black jacket, hunter boots, watch, ring, as well as carrying a Prada purse. Defendant gave a timeline of 6 or 6.10 a.m. on the 1st when he last saw her. What I'd like to do now is just describe his actions on the days from January 1st. Defendant indicated on January 1st uh, at 3 p.m. he did some errands and he went to his mother's house in Swampscott but got lost. Um, because he didn't have his phone. He said he knew it was lost when he saw the pirate ship on Route 1. Defendant stayed, stayed 15 minutes, then went to Whole Foods and CVS. Surveillance was checked, and he did not enter either of those stores. On January 1st, first, defendant Googled using his son's iPad. Some of his searches are as follows. Keep in mind that the defendant said he left at 16, 6 a.m. At 4.55 a.m. on January 1st, he searched how long before a body starts to smell. At 4.58 a.m., how to stop a body from decomposing. At 5.20 a.m., he searched how to embalm a body. At 5.47 a.m., 10 ways to dispose, dispose of a dead body if you really need to. At 6.25 a.m. on the 1st, how long for someone to be missing to inherit. At 6.34 a.m. on the 1st, can you throw away body parts? At 9.29 a.m., what does formaldehyde do? At 9.34 a.m. on the 1st, how long does DNA last? At 9.59 a.m., can identification be made on partial remains? At 11.34 a.m., dismemberment and the best ways to dispose of a body. At 11.44, how to clean blood from wooden floor? At 11.56 on the 1st, luminol to detect blood. At 1.08, what happens when you put body parts in ammonia? At 1.21 p.m., is it better to throw crime scene clothes away or wash them? Those were on the January 1st. There was also information gained from the defendant's phone, which showed on January 2nd, he was at Home uh, Goods in Norwell, where he purchased three rugs. There were also more Google searches on January 2nd. At 12.45 p.m., 
hacksaw best tool to dismember. At 1.10 p.m., can you be charged with murder without a body? At 1.14 p.m., can you identify a body without, with broken teeth? On January 2nd, following those, uh, the defendant uh, was seen on surveillance at the Home Depot in Rockland. In checking the surveillance, the defendant is observed on a security camera pushing a cart. Items included cleaning products, mops, brushes, tape, top, type, um, a Tyvek suit with boot covers, buckets, goggles, baking soda, a hatchet. He had a face mask and rubber gloves on at the time he was pushing the cart in Home uh, Depot. At 5.32, he was seen at the Durban Street in Hingham, now removing the gloves and the mask. Uh, data from his phone also tracked his whereabouts on January 3rd. Uh, locations uh, were traveled at 427 on January 3rd to an apartment complex in Abington. Surveillance shows the defendant's Volvo, as well as a male fitting the defendant's appearance, exit a car near the dumpster. He walks to the dumpster carrying a garbage bag. He's leaning, and it appears to be heavy as he has to heft it, heft it into the dumpster. He walks to the dumpster with the uh, garbage bag uh, and leaves it. On 4.48, he hit another complex in Abington, and at 5.10 p.m., cell phone shows records at another apartment in Brockton. Video shows um, a party consistent with uh, his appearance and his Volvo. Again, he discarded items in the dumpster. On January 3rd, that same day, at 1.02 p.m., he did some more uh, Google searches. What happens to here on a dead body? At 1.13 p.m., what is the rate of decomposition of a body found in a plastic bag compared to on a surface in the woods? At 1.20 p.m., can baking soda mask or make a body smell good? On January 4th, uh, the following day, the defendant went to Home Goods in TJ Maxx. He purchased towels as well as bath mats and men's clothing. At 4.15 that day on the 4th, he went to Lowe's where he purchased squeegees and a trash can. On January 4th, when Cahasset police went to the house uh, on the well-being check, officers observed his Volvo with seats down and a plastic liner in the back of the car. The next day, a view of the Volvo showed his seats folded down, floor mats with some dirt, and the carpet appeared to show fresh vacuum streaks. When asked about the line of the defendant said he threw in the trash. Chemists uh, later uh, analyzed the car and there was present blood in the car. On January 5th, a review of the data from defendant's phone showed his phone traveled at 8 a.m. First to his day here and then to Swampskit, where his mother resides. The phone traveled to the complex where his mother lives at 9.30 a.m., went for about five minutes around the building to the southeast corner. In the southeast corner of that complex uh, is where there was a dumpster. The dumpster was later uh, secured and searched. On January 8th, police and crime scene services searched the house in Cahasset. They found blood in the basement, a knife with the presence of blood, the knife was damaged. A second knife was also found in that basement. In addition, there was heavy duty large top plastic liners purchased from that Home Depot trip. As part of the investigation, uh, police checked for activity on honest credit cards, banks, flights, trains. There was no activity uh, since she was last seen on January 1st. Uh, police also tried to track down what happened to the bags that the defendant was seen throwing in the dumpster earlier. Um, this was over in Abington. These bags and what was in them were already picked up and taken to a location for shredding and to cost incinerated. By the time police located that, they were already destroyed. However, investigators did secure and search the dumpsters from uh, defendant's mother's complex in Swampskit. It was searched at a transfer station in Peabody. Investigators recovered 10 trash bags. Inside the trash bags, many of these items contained uh, stains uh, consistent with blood, in fact, a lot. Among the items secured were towels, rags, slippers, tape, Tyvek suit, gloves, cleaning agents, carpets, rugs, hunter boots, Prada purse, 
a COVID-19 vaccine card in the name of Anna Walsh, a hacksaw, a hatchet, and some cutting shears. The purse and boots were described as what Anna was last seen in. A portion of the rug was heavily stained with red-brown stains. The substance was consistent with also having baking soda on it. There was a portion of a necklace consistent with one that Anna had been seen wearing in photos. The state crime lab performed testing on certain selected items that were uh, recovered from those trash bags. There was human blood on found, found on them, and then they were sent for DNA testing. The findings were as follows. On the slippers in the interior, Anna and Brian Walsh were contributors to the DNA on those slippers, which had blood on them. On the exterior, Anna and Brian Walsh contributed to the DNA found on those slippers. The Tyvek suit. On the interior cuffs, Anna and Brian Walsh contributed to the DNA that was left on them. On the exterior, partially, on the exterior left pant leg, Anna Walsh was a contributor to the DNA. On the interior right sleeve, Anna Walsh was a, a, a contributor to the DNA that was found on the uh, Tyvek suit. There was tissues which found that Anna Walsh contributed to the DNA. Uh, there was one other earlier Google search, which would be of note. On December 27th, defendant Googled, what's the best state to divorce for a man? Rather than divorce, it is believed that Ryan Walsh dismembered Anna Walsh and discarded her body. The bags were later discarded in Swampscott and contained uh, Anna's property and the items used to clean up, as well as the DNA that was left behind. The Commonwealth is asking that the defendant be held without bail for the murder of his wife. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Can we be heard at all? No, Your Honor, thank you. All right. The defendant will be held without bail uh, pending indictment.